Welcome everybody to another YouTube breakdown from the Art of War team. This time we are discussing how John Lennon and Richard Siegler are going to be looking at how this Death Guard meta is going to shape the overall competitive 40k um, tournament scene. Absolutely. We've got the new Death Guard Codex in hand and there's a lot of really powerful rules here. Even if Death Guard don't win every single tournament, they're going to be a powerful army and they're going to affect how every other faction approaches the game. If you like our content, make sure to check out The War Room. You can actually find that on our website, theartofwar40k.com. It's a great premium service where you can find all kinds of competitive content, coaching matches, and clinics where we discuss everything in competitive Warhammer 40k. So John, why don't we start with some of the strengths of this brand new Death Guard book. Uh, let's start with the Contagions. There's a lot of new powerful abilities that Death Guard received um, for those pure Death Guard detachments in which they're turning off things like rerolls, turning off enemy aura abilities, giving out a minus one toughness uh, aura, um, extra AP on their shooting, which is very powerful in a meta full of cover and two up armor saves, um, half movement as an aura to help uh, slow down your enemy from moving away from those you know, nasty Death Guard Terminators. There's a lot of powerful rules here in these contagions. Absolutely, and contagions are contingent on being pure Death Guard, and they have a range that starts off sounding very small. It's just one inch, then it gets three inches, then six, then nine. But the thing is that Death Guard can grow them. They have spells, they have stratagems, uh, they even have relics that can increase the range of their various auras. So it's actually going to be a lot scarier than it looks, especially early in the game. By the end of it, almost everything is going to have a large contagion bubble. These contagions are just super powerful debuffs across the board. It's going to make being close to Death Guard a very, very dangerous proposition. You really want to be keeping track of what different uh, contagions your opponent has and where they're going. There are even some stratagems, such as uh, Flash Outbreak, that let you move a contagion around. Normally, they're kind of like a Warlord trait, where it'll be on your Warlord and a couple other characters that you mm -hmm. buy it for. But then with the stratagem and some other rules, they're going to actually spread to different models, which is a super fluffy, super powerful rule set. I actually really like the way that they've approached this, but you really, as an opposing player, have to be keeping track of these things. Some of them will improve the AP of weapons, and again, some like the half movement is super dangerous. If one fast Death Guard unit, something like a bloat drone, mm -hmm. manages to get in your line and have the movement of your entire army, you may not be able to get away from the rest of it, and that's a really bad place to be. Well, that's where death and destruction are going to visit upon your army, John. Mm -hmm. Now, we've also got um, the new updated Inexorable Advance, which ignores all different movement penalties for these Death Guard units. Death Guard, um, for early part of 9th edition and 8th edition, one of the, their limitations was they were slower overall as an army. They could be slowed down by things like Tangle Folk Grenade, by Seismic Bomb from Admech, by Forest and different terrain features. This new rule really allows Death Guard to get into the middle of the table as quick as possible and you can't really slow them down from getting there. Yeah, absolutely. And that applies to all of their infantry. So it admittedly, moving five or six inches a turn, maybe seven on something like Possessed, doesn't sound that fast. And it sounds like you can outrun it easily. But if you're going over craters and forests and suddenly your space moons are moving four, now they're faster than you. And again, you know, tremor shells, tangle foot grenades, none of that stuff is going to actually slow down the Death Guard infantry. Really inexorable there. Uh, they also got quite a bit more durable. A lot of their infantry got plus one wound, kind of in line with the Space Marine Codex. Mm -hmm. All the units that you'd expect gained a wound, but the biggest part is that Disgusting Resilient changed from a five up Feel No Pain to a minus one damage. As in, it may sound bad losing a Feel No Pain, but they can still get it with some character support up to a six up Feel No Pain. That and minus one damage is just going to be so tough to kill. You know, a Terminator just went from two wounds with a five up Feel No Pain to three wounds, minus one damage, and potentially a six of feel no pain. I'll take that all day. And especially considering that a lot of the meta was uh, two damage weapons, whether in combat, I know my Blood Angels had uh, flat two damage all over the place, things like Akalon Terminators, Custodes got buffed to flat two damage. This is really not the place you want those types of units anymore. Coming in and swinging with a really elite infantry unit with only one damage against Death Guard, that's not really the place you want to be. That's a lot of points for not as much damage as you'd hope. Absolutely. A lot of the game was kind of built to kill Space Marines. Space Marines were a very popular army up to this point. I'm sure they still will be, but they were bringing around a lot of two and three wound infantry, so people were bringing a lot of two and three damage guns. Mostly two damage guns, because those are a lot easier to get than something that's flat three damage. Almost every army was looking to find ways to get just two damage into the list because it was so powerful in the meta. Death Guard are going to completely flip that on its head. If you're bringing two damage into a minus one damage army, 
that's going to take literally twice as long to kill what you want to kill. Yeah, it is not a great place to be for two damage right now. In addition to that, one of the main strengths of Death Guard here is a combination with the Foul Blight Spawn, a character who received a similar ability to the Judiciar that Marines have. Um, it's a three-inch fight last uh, ability, pick mm -hmm. a target. In addition, their old ability of um, counting enemy units that are within uh, six inches, um, this is now a relic. They no longer count as having charged, and they no longer count as getting charge bonuses. So things like Shock Assault, these various uh, things like Savage Echoes or the White Scars plus one damage, all that stuff um, is actually shut off by this Foul Blight Spawn aura. And there's um, particular relics or psychic powers to help increase the range of that as well, all the way up to 12 inches. That is a nasty bubble to try and engage with, right, John? Yeah, absolutely. It's not a contagion because it is a relic, but even so, that that's so deadly. You really have to be careful to approach that. And it's really going to change how people are used to fighting Death Guard. It used to be that you wanted to hit them with the biggest stick you could find, but if you're charging in and they're actually hitting you first, that may not be as much fun as you thought. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to uh, try to engage the new Death Guard, and I think a lot of people are going to have to rethink their mentality on how they try to kill these tough targets. Definitely, and while this isn't a video about Chaos Soup, um, John and I both feel that this type of tech piece um, could also be extremely powerful in most Chaos lists. Absolutely. Even though I think that pure Death Guard are going to be a very viable tournament army, that doesn't mean that your normal Chaos Space Marine player isn't going to look to maybe take a little patrol or ally detachment with some of these new Death Guard rules. Definitely. And then finally, one of the last and uh, greatest strengths that Death Guard received is their various ways of endgame scoring, in particular their mission secondaries, to spoiled ground and spread the sickness. Both of these are easy ways to rack up points for Death Guard, doing the things they want to do, survive into late game, stand on objectives, do actions near them, um, and they rack up quite a few points um, very quickly. And so Death Guard, even if they don't directly engage their opponent, they're able to rack up all sorts of mission secondaries while standing on those primary objectives as well. So it's actually really difficult to slow the scoring of Death Guard uh, with these secondaries available. Absolutely. Whenever we see these typical very tough armies, you know, we've seen Death Stars and Unkillable units all throughout the history of 40k. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to play against them is always to not try to kill them, but to instead beat them on the mission. So getting some relatively solid uh, secondary options for Death Guard is just going to help them so that if someone tries to just play the mission and outscore them, Death Guard will be able to play the mission as well. Um, especially, I really like Spread the Sickness because it takes up the same slot as uh, some of the um, other secondaries like uh, Deploy Scramblers or um, Raise the Banners. And this is frankly just a little bit better at that. So I really like this one for Death Guard because it plays more in line with what they want, which is to slowly eat up ground, not sneak a unit or two into your deployment zone. That's not really what Death Guard are trying yeah. to do. And they generally don't have cheap disposable units that want to be you know, sitting in reserve and then coming in late and then not doing anything. Absolutely. Besides getting action. So <laughs> I think this, these, this combination um, of all these strengths makes Death Guard one of the best books to come out so far and one that is going to shape a lot of what other armies are going to try and do to adapt. And that's what we're going to focus on next. So let's start with the big one first, John. It, near and dear to your heart, it's the Space Marines. How are Space Marines going to adapt to some of these brand new rules and um, powers that uh, Death Guard have? Yeah. It's always fun to lump you know, Space Marines into one army, but you know, they really might as well be almost 10 armies by themselves. They've got so many different options that I think Space Marines will find a way to still survive in this Death Guard meta, but change is absolutely coming if you're a Space Marine player. Uh, we've actually already put Space Marines into Death Guard a couple of times, and I think it's pretty clear that the old way to play Space Marines, at least some of the most popular ones, are maybe not as reliable now. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Space Marines were best at we're taking fast-moving, short-range units, short-range shooting, really good melee, a lot of jump pack units, moving up the board, killing everything in their way, having a lot of objective security you know, units here, and especially the characters, and using that to bully the scoreboard. So you could play conservative and then use your high-speed army to get out and jump on objectives late. You had really powerful shooting from units like uh, plasma scepters, occasionally eradicators, but frankly, a lot of lists really relied on those plasma scepters, which are just a flat two damage. And then armies like Blood Angels and White Scars would often bring, you know, Sanguinary Guard, which are flat damage too. Any White Scar unit with a damage one weapon like a Lightning Claw becomes damage too. You could get a lot of really good things there. Uh, frankly, I don't think that that can be your plan one anymore. Uh, Space Marines are still good at getting into combat. They're very fast. They do still hit very hard. But so much of the army relies on rerolls, buffs, auras, all these different things. And especially it relies on getting to the opponent and hitting them 
before they hit you. Uh, Death Guard may just be too tough for that. You know, things like the Foul Blight spawn aura, as well as potentially shutting down rerolls, can really dampen what a Space Marine player is going to do. I think what Space Marines have to do is, even though Death Guard are good at it as well, they really need to focus on the range game and playing the mission. You want to have some melee units, but I don't think that running at the opponent and killing them in melee can be your only way to interact anymore. I really like going to some fast mobile units with decent high-powered shooting, like multi-melt attack bikes. Uh, I really like those over the Eradicator because for just a few more points, you become much faster. It's going to be a lot harder for a Death Guard army to corner and catch you, and you want to be staying at that max range just shooting Death Guard, hoping that they can't really kill you back. Uh, you're not going to kill Death Guard quickly, but if you can chip away at them, you may make some progress by the end of the game. Uh, as well, really fast units, especially ones that can deep strike, I still really like, you know, Sanguinary Guard and Vanguard Veterans, even though I'm not planning to uh, throw them into, you know, my opponent's Blight Lord Terminators and kill them, because frankly, I don't think I will. Uh, I think that having fast units that can go around and try to hit smaller units is going to be very important. Death Guard have all these powerful auras, but these auras can only be in one or two places at once. You can hope that throughout a five turn game, you're going to find some units to charge that aren't near these auras. If you can find something to charge that won't make you fight last, and maybe you do get your rerolls, Space Marines still do hit hard. It's possible to kill Death Guard units. You just don't want to throw your army into the center of their army and hope to get a win. Definitely. Um, next up, we have the Necrons. So overall, there have been two main playstyles for Necrons. On the one hand, a custom dynasty build that was based around Obsec and uh, the pregame six-inch move. And those lists typically had a lot of two damage, Scorpec Destroyers, Wraiths, Constructs, um, and then you know big units of Scarabs. These types of lists are probably hit a little harder by Death Guard, especially those Wraith units. You don't, like John was saying, you don't really want to be directly engaging uh, Death Guard. Either they're going to have the Foul Blight spawn nearby, so you count as not charging, and or they're going to have um, you know Poxwalker screens, that type of thing, to protect their key units from getting hit. So. Overall, I think that list is going to shift a bit. I think those lists are going to bring at least one, maybe even a second warrior brick now. And those warriors, yes, they'll get double obsec, which isn't really a big bonus, but you need them to clear screens. So I think maybe you'll start off with Goss Reapers, um, which is the shorter range gun, um, but higher strength, higher AP. Or you might see one and one, one of the flayers, so you get that little bit of extra range and the access to the stratagem where sixes um, are an additional hit, just to help clear those screens that uh, Death Guard is going to have um, to be able to start getting into their actual units, tying them up, tar pitting them with scarabs, and holding down the objectives. Because Death Guard overall, their obsec is either going to be small Plague Marine units, generally, or they're going to be these uh, larger bricks of Poxwalkers. And I think the Warriors are going to really help uh, against those Poxwalkers, which I feel at the end of the day are probably going to be the more popular obsec option for Death Guard, because they have a wonderful strat um, to bring back Poxwalker units, kind of like Necron Warriors can reanimate. So I think we're going to see more of that. So those Necron lists uh, that are custom dynasty are going to want a ways to clear screens, and they're going to want to rely less on their two damage weapons in combat. So they might look at things like Lich Guard, which are also very durable, can stand on objectives, and have volume of, of attacks in, uh, for one damage. So I think we'll see more of that. Uh, for the Silent King builds, which are already based around Warriors, I think they're in an amazing spot into Death Guard. Most of their weapons are either volume of fire one damage, and the Warriors themselves are in Lich Guard, or they're very high damage, like the Silent King's Veneers with flat six damage. So I think that type of Necron list isn't really going to you know, care as much about the defense that Death Guard got access to. However, um, even my Silent King Novak build is still a melee army on the surface. It has quite a bit of shooting, but it really is a melee army. So I'm going to have to play this matchup a little more carefully and um, play more to the mission rather than trying to kill the Death Guard as much as possible because I really don't want to be charging into that foul blight spawn range and letting those Death Guard units uh, get extra damage on me before I hit them. So um, every warrior is precious, so I think that type of list is going to um, try and add a couple more mobility tools. So 100% you'll have that uh, Veil of Darkness in there to teleport, um, but you might actually go for a, a Goss Flayer unit to help clear those Pox Walkers earlier without getting within that 12 inch range where you don't really want to be against Death Guard. So I think uh, adding a little bit of extra range might actually help that Silent King build, uh, especially into Death Guard. Absolutely. Just in general against Death Guard, um, we can really see that you know they've got so many good short-ranged auras. Their offense is just as potent in close combat, mm -hmm. or in close quarters, I should say, where 12-inch flamers you know, with rerolls to wound, 
you know, bolt guns rapid firing, you know, mortal wounds, you know, just coming out, out of the woodworks here. Yep. <laughs> um, if you're going to get within 12 inches of the death guard, you need to kill what you're hitting or you need to make your piece that the unit you just sent in may not be there for much longer. And that's okay if you have these kind of disposable trading pieces that can deal damage. Those can be very useful. You just have to know what you're getting into against the Death Guard. Definitely. Uh, what else do we have? We've got Sisters of Battle, the Deptus Sororitas, another faction uh, dear to Mr. John here. How do you feel about Sisters into, the, into this new Death Guard menace? So I actually feel like Sisters are going to come out not, you know, amazing, but still relatively well against the new Death Guard. Uh, sisters have very potent firepower uh, that is actually capable of taking down the Death Guard. Mm -hmm. um, they are also very good at putting in high damage weapons. That's one of the good ways to deal with Disgust and Resilient, where if you hit a Chaos, you know, one of these Terminators that's minus one damage and it fails its invuln, you can use Miracle Ice mechanics to just drop a straight, you know, five or six on the damage. And sure, they get subtracted to four or five, but on a three wound model, that's usually going to be enough. Yeah. Uh, they do have the range game, and as well, they have some cheap units that are going to be able to kind of spread the field. Now, I think that this is going to lead to a decrease in popularity of some units like Mortifiers, where their heavy bolters are still good at killing Poxwalkers, but are maybe not so good at killing the Plague Marines. I think you could still take Mortifiers, but you probably drop down from when some people were being crazy and taking 12 <laughs> or 9. I think having, you know, maybe 4, 2 units of 2 would be a really good spot to be against Death Card. Uh, more, uh, pardon me. Retributors are being a really popular unit right now for Sisters. I expect we're going to see even more of them. Uh, the ability to boost their range up to 36 inches is great for targeting Death Guard and probably not being hit too hard in return. Um, and it's also a great way to kill their vehicles, which are mostly Toughness 7 or 8. As well, I do have to mention, Mortarian is a big bad man, and killing him is going to be difficult for most factions. Sisters have one of the best ways to deal with that. That's a 1 CP stratagem to reroll wound rolls against any Psyker they attack. Now, rerolls may not work uh, if you're too close to them and you start getting in those contagion ranges, but if you're shooting a multi melta from 36 inches away, you can pop that stratagem and get some really good damage into the big man himself. Overall, I think sisters are going to be relatively well positioned. Uh, they really like having transports, which will shield the units inside from contagion abilities. Mm -hmm. As well, they're already a low toughness army. Frankly, going from toughness 2 to toughness 3 doesn't really change the fact that you're getting wounded on 2s and 3s by everything in the Death Guard arsenal. As well, they have some high-speed units and a lot of disposable things to play the corners of the board, and they actually have the guns to do damage from a distance to the Death Guard. Do you think we'll see uh, as many Repentia as we've seen in the past because they rely on that two damage and also those rerolls to hit? I actually could see Repentia getting maybe a little bit less popular. Okay. They are very good, and I still think you're probably going to take one or two squads in every list. Maybe you do still take three if you want to be really aggressive, but I could actually see just taking one less unit and instead going for Zephyrim. Frankly, you're not going to send either unit into the teeth of the enemy army, but having one damage doesn't really matter against Disgust and Resilient, and those rerolls to wound can really help with some high toughness targets. If you're trying to kill a Plague Brisk Crawler, for example, then the Zephyr are actually going to get it done much faster than a Repentia unit would. As well, they are going to still be pretty darn strong when it comes to clearing Poxwalker screens. Absolutely. Next up, we have Admech, the shooting menace par excellence for a while in uh, 9th edition. Now, Admech as a whole, I've been uh, testing some Stygies list, much more combat oriented over the last couple weeks. Uh, lots of drills, lots of Fulgurite priests trying to get that two up invuln, uh, well, three up invuln and plus one to saving throws on those middle objectives. This style is really not what you want into Death Guard, frankly. The Foul Blight spawn kind of shuts it down. Um, charging in there and having the Death Guard units fight first before I even kill anything. Um, so just saying on that five up invuln, five up fetal pain. That's not really going to be enough. Uh, you'll lose most of your priest unit. And so I think overall, Admech might actually start switching back towards those Mars lists with the supreme firepower and using maybe one drill and one unit of priests, or maybe two units of priests in the Scorpius Dune Riders to act as counter assault. But largely, you're going back to the Iron Striders. And in this case, 100%, I would be switching to the Cognus Laz Cannons. Get that higher AP, get that uh, multi damage, because um, I will still take quite a few Scorpius Disintegrators, and probably still indirect fire, help against Poxwalker screens, help against most of the armies in the game. Um, but I don't think I want mostly two damage. Those Cognus um, auto cannons, I think that's a little too excessive in a Death Guard meta. So switching to last cannons there. Um, in terms of the Archaeoraptor Fusilov, which was one of the best tools against Death Guard, dropping mortal wounds on them, and also being able to slow them down with Seismic Bomb, 
because it doesn't have that second utility anymore of slowing their units down, and armies like Sisters of Battle with those Retributors are going to be all over the meta, I think I'm going to actually try to steer away from the Flyers now. Um, also, Death Guard outside of Poxwalkers aren't going to be running too many big units to get as many mortals as possible. So I think overall I'm going to switch back to more um, board control elements. So the Severus Raiders, the Solver Hounds, maybe some Taraxi, Corpus Gari Priest coming in from Reserve, being able to pull apart armies like Death Guard, do damage on multiple flanks at once. I think this is where Admech is going to live. So I actually think Admech um, suits up quite well into Death Guard. But you are going to have to build around that minus one damage. If you just rely on flat two damage, I don't think you're going to do enough over the early turns to slow the Death Guard Menace down when they start dominating the primary and the midfield. Absolutely. And if you're talking Corpus Scari, I feel like we have to mention the Wrath of Mars. Mortal Wounds are one of the best ways to deal with Death Guard. Mm -hmm. uh, they have natural high toughness and a damage reduction. Neither of those things really matter against Mortal Wounds. If you take a unit like those Corpus Scari Elector Priests, you know, at Strength 5 and potentially AP 2, they can wound most of the Death Guard infantry fairly well, but getting those extra mortal wounds on top I think is going to be really good value into something like these Death Guard units. Definitely. Um, so I'm a big fan of where Admech is going to sit in the meta, and uh, we're going to be testing that out very soon in place like the War Room. Now, we have demons as well, John. Oh, How do we, you feel about demons? We did demons? just mention mortal wounds. Uh, I've got to mention Chaos Demons. Chaos Demons are already in an interesting spot in the meta, where some lists like the Slanesh Rust Rush have been very powerful, but other ones like uh, you know TJ Lanigan style with you know the greater demons of you know Zinch as well as Pink Horus take a very different approach to winning the game. Either way, uh, I think that it's going to be very interesting to see how demons play into Death Guard. Just as often, I think they're actually going to be allies, but when they do face each other, it's going to get weird. Uh, that Foul Blightspawn aura that we talked about actually also stops your opponent from always fighting first. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a pretty big hit to the Slanesh Demon Rush list. It still has some play, mostly because uh, their actual combat elements aren't being affected too much. Uh, usually those big Keepers of Secrets don't actually rely on any uh, auras, so shutting off auras isn't too big of a deal, and they normally rely on actual quality rather than rerolls. So again, they're probably still going to be hitting just as hard. Flat damage 3 across the board goes down to flat damage 2, that's a little annoying into the Terminators, but still, two, saved, uh, two failed saves should be enough to knock out one of those models. They definitely can do the damage, it's still just a matter of can they take the damage as well. Minus one damage and just the weight of attacks that these Death Guard Flamers can put out, as well as all the other things they do close range, is going to be very dangerous for the Slanesh lists. I think that they're going to have to adapt a little bit, maybe again focus on more smaller units. Maybe instead of one big unit of fiends, they maybe have three units. Maybe some mm -hmm. smaller units to go, again, clear out pox walkers, screens, bully them with obsec. Big demonet hordes, you know, again, going from toughness three to toughness two, doesn't make too much of a difference into death guard because there's so much, you know, strength, you know, six plus anyway. But if you can crowd them with obsec, maybe you can tie them up for long enough that it's all right that you're maybe not as effective. So it's still possible there. But I have to mention, mortal wound spam is a great way to kill death guard. If you've got something like, you know, a Zinch list where Pink Horrors and Flamers can, you know, deep strike and move around the battlefield, you know, with their guns, they can actually kill Poxwalkers relatively efficiently. There's a lot of one damage in there, just forcing saves on Death Guard. Again, just weight of damage one actually will kill these minus one damage models. But again, the mortal wound output from something like the big Super Chicken, that's the Lord of Change, who's exalted, he's got the Warlord trait, he can be plus one mortal wound for every single spell that he casts. That's going to add up really quickly. Something like that and Magnus, where Death Guard firepower is pretty good, but a lot of it relies on reducing your toughness and uh, its innate AP, and especially some different buffs that can improve the AP. None of that actually really helps against the Zinch Demons. Going from you know toughness 7 to 6, and again, I think they actually have like a mutable spell that can maybe improve their toughness back to 7. I think that they'll be able to hang on there and put out enough mortal wound output to clear through the screens quickly and then start hitting the actual Terminators. That could be a very interesting way to deal with Death Guard, but it should be mentioned, Death Guard do still have a female pain, and they just have more wounds now, so I don't think it's a foolproof result, but I could see, again, pushing for a more MSU build, and then also having a lot of mortal wound output concentrated in one spot is a good way to kill some of these Death Guard units. Yeah, I'd also like to second the large bricks of pink horrors that you mentioned. Just having relatively durable obsec on those middle objectives early Death Guard um, don't have a ton of volume of fire unless you're explicitly building around it with large bricks of Blight Lord Terminators. So overall, they don't have easy access of killing things like bricks of Necron Warriors, or in this case, you know, 30 Demonettes, 30 Pink Horrors. 
So I think those types of tools, even if it's just one or two units, to slow down and draw the firepower of the Death Guard into just that unit for uh, you know those first two or so turns, I think that's a big boost. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as people start to counter Death Guard, it should be noted that Death Guard will probably adapt themselves. You know, maybe something like Death Shroud Terminators with all their low strength flamers will be very popular at clearing hordes of lesser demons that are minus mm -hmm. one toughness. There are lots of different ways that uh, Death Guard can use their different tools and adapt to how we adapt to them. They've got a lot of different, just a lot of different options and, you know, very diverse, you know, units in that codex. So it's going to be interesting to see how the meta evolves. But we do want to touch on just some general things that the rest of the meta we think will evolve to actually deal with Death Guard. Absolutely. I've, I've got to shout it out first. Just having high strength, high a AP, high damage, direct fire guns actually can kill Death Guard. Death Guard are super durable until they're not. If you put something like a, a Demolisher Cannon or multiple multi meltas into Death Guard, every failed save is actually going to hurt. I think some armies that are maybe a little less popular right now, like Imperial Guard, may actually be very good into Death Guard. Uh, just having some innate rerolls from long range, as well as the Vengeance for Cadia stratagem on you know Strength 10, AP 3, Damage D6 Demolisher Cannons, that's actually going to be very hard for Death Guard to deal with because that kind of firepower can actually pick up their Terminators relatively quickly. Absolutely. In addition to that, you'd also want some good range on there, because like we've mentioned, Death Guard is generally a mid-range to short-range type of army, and if you can safely uh, fire away at them for multiple turns, you are going to be able to pick up some key resources, especially those screening elements, and then get in onto their objectives, deny things like uh, spread the sickness points. Mm -hmm. um, I think having a good range bracket in your army doesn't have to be the whole army, but having a couple units um, that can fire away from at least midfield, if not your deployment zone, I think that's going to be very important against Death Guard. Absolutely. Just make sure that you can actually protect them because some armies, or some Death Guard armies, I should say, will take the Plague Risk Crawler to yeah. actually try to deal with your own units that are trying to outrange them. Yeah, and there'll be an interesting synergy there of whether they go with the LAS cannons for you know dealing with those types of units or whether they go for the Flamers for dealing with those big obsec bricks that we were mentioning before. Absolutely. Uh, we also have, of course, just any mobility tricks. So things like being able to move twice, whether in the psychic phase, um, different stratagems, being able to um, get onto objectives as quick as possible to either obsec them away, because like we've mentioned, Death Guard only have so many units in their army, and only a handful of them are going to be obsec. So being able to you know, clear the obsec as quick as possible and then put your own on there, that's a big deal against uh, Death Guard because either they're going to ignore that objective or they're going to have to send those slow, relatively slow, expensive Terminators um, and or vehicles over to that objective to try and deal with it. So I think having mobility rules here. Also, mobility uh, ties into the secondaries. As we mentioned, you don't really want to be engaging Death Guard directly, so you're going to be wanting to take secondaries that help you to ignore what Death Guard do best. So things like engage in all fronts, being able to play the outskirts of the board, taking things like deploy scramblers, especially if you have an option to get into their deployment zone after turn three, instead of deep striking directly, you know, you finish off their backfield screens, get back there on turn four or five, finish it off. That's very important, as well as building into secondaries like while we stand, we fight, where you can keep these elements alive into the late game and secure those sweet 15 points, uh, which is important against these Death Guard end game secondaries. Absolutely. I do also want to touch on the mobility that you mentioned. Death Guard even have some tricks built into the Codex to stop you from falling back from combat. If you have ways to leave combat without actually falling back, something like the Veil of Darkness, Gate of Infinity, or other similar rules, that's going to be super powerful to make sure that they don't tie you up in a spot where you can't shoot them. Because again, you don't really want to be stuck punching Death Guard, you're almost certainly going to lose that fight. Definitely. On top of that, if we're looking at adding even more damage that's effective against Death Guard, building in tools to help spam mortal wounds is very powerful. John mentioned demons as being able to, with the Zinch detachments or Thousand Suns, being able to pump out tons of mortal wounds. Admech have multiple ways to put out mortal wounds, Wrath of Mars being one. You could still take the Archiraptor Fusilovs. Um, Fulgurite Priests can do it as well. Um, uh, Sisters of Battle have various little tech pieces that they can add for mortal wounds, uh, like War Gear on Canisys, right, John? Absolutely. The Triumph of St. Catherine, another popular choice, also does mortal wounds, and a lot of these buffs actually are even better if you target a Chaos unit. <laughs> <laughs> Just as they should be. Then you have Necrons, things like the Voltaic Staff Strat, or the um, taking any Tesla weapons and being able to do a little uh, four-ups for all the surrounding units uh, taking a mortal wound. That's a very nice tech piece to have it built into your list. Um, Marines as a whole have things like Hammer of Wrath, uh, the stratagem where when you charge in with the jump pack unit, 
Um, you roll equal to or greater than their toughness and do some mortals. So very powerful against things like a Poxwalker brick if you're sending in you know, five to 10 Vanguard vets, for instance. So uh, each of these armies, um, as well as other armies in the meta, are gonna be trying to build in mortal wounds. Yeah, absolutely. And as people start to build for Death Guard, be aware of what those things mean for your faction. If people start taking a lot of really high damage weapons, maybe this isn't the best time to uh, run a rhino into the middle of the table. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, John, I think that's a wonderful breakdown of some of the tools we're going to want to build into our meta list to deal efficiently as possible with Death Guard. Um, overall, we focused on some of the top factions in the game, but there are many more. And if you want to hear more about how those other factions are going to adapt, where can you go, John? Absolutely. You can find our, us playing these games and putting these ideas into practice both on our YouTube channel and in the Art of War War Room. Again, check that out on our website or in the link below, theartofwar40k.com, and you can get access to the War Room. We've got premium coaching matches, great clinics where we bust out all of the different strategies, tips, and tactics on how to evolve with the ever-shaping 40k meta. That includes keeping up with the Death Guard. Definitely. And if you like this content, if you enjoy it, please give us a like. Please hit that subscribe button. Join the channel as a member. Get access to our sub badges, emotes, early access to our videos like this one, as well as that exclusive members only hangout and hobby on Wednesdays. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time.